uh, uh, works that we have been doing in Devos, uh, or some of those in relation to uh, integrated developments and, and uh, probably that kind of uh, introduction to the session that students have. So as we already heard and we have been discussing that the immense uh, diversity that we have in the oceans, we have actually only, uh, we have only covered a uh, small part of that and only a small part of the species have been identified. So there is still a big uh, unknown gap with respect of the biodiversity. And also this morning, uh, uh, Terry was telling us about this marine ecosystem services and what the situation of the, of the marine, marine area. So <coughs> the di biodiversity matters. So, uh, and also the over-exploitation that is compromising the provision of the ecosystem service. <coughs> so, the ecosystem approach in marine management, that includes all the living and non-living components and links it also to our human drivers. Now, the EU Marine Strategy Framework Directive is aiming to provide the sustainable use of the marine <coughs> environment but uh, also aiming to achievement of good environmental status by 2020. And uh, biodiversity is one of the core objectives uh, in, the, in the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, and it includes protection of species, habitats, ecosystems, and also genetic diversity, as well as food that structure and function. Uh, Good environmental status. So now we have the approach of these uh, 11 descriptors that actually cover relevant aspects of the, of the marine community. And we have the uh, descriptors that are related to the assessment of the marine biodiversity and environmental status that we have been working with, and also those that are related to the assessment of pressures and impacts on the marine environment, such as non-indigenous species and seafloor also, but from the point of view of the physical loss and disturbance. While the uh, biodiversity ones are related to species, habitats, ecosystems, food webs, and uh, benthic in integrity. So we started to devote survey to looking at the indicators, and those are now included in this DevoTool software that is actually a tool that allows to make queries of the indicators. Many of the indicators are operational, but they are also conceptual and indicators that are under development. Uh, in our work of querying the indicators, or carrying out the survey, we focused on uh, biodiversity, uh, also non-indigenous species and indicators related to food webs and sea floor integrity and the attributes uh, linked to those uh, descriptors. So the first objective of the survey and, and catalog uh, was, was to look at the, what kind of indicators we have and what are the possible gaps, what are the strengths of the available indicators. Also focus the further development and refine to carry out in the devotes and elsewhere. And also was the really the trans transfer of knowledge across the <coughs> countries. The sources of information included the uh, member states' initial assessment indicators. Also we looked at the indicators of water framework directly that have been used in the coastal waters coming from other projects such as WISER and regional sea conventions that have been on the process of compiling information on indicators, and also scientific tools. Then we also explored that what type of indicators, and I'm not going to go into details of this, but there are a whole wealth of indicators, most of them related to the status, of course, because the focus of the work was those that are related to biodiversity status. And the main attributes being the biotope features, and also there were indicators with several variable types, and many of those which have actually more than one variable. So a whole, whole lot of different 
indicators coming from these various sources. Uh, also, we looked how these uh, indicators, how they cover the different biodiversity components. So, uh, indicators were often applied to single biodiversity components, but also they were addressing several of these biodiversity components simultaneously, or none of the components, so that they were more, more general. And also the indicator uh, catalog contains information of the pressures that were linked with the indicators, and most common pressures were the uh, nutrient loading, hydrological processes, then the synthetic and non-synthetic compounds and changes in sensation. Also the magnetic meter was identified in the indicator catalog as a relevant one. However, there was a large overlap of indicators that were assigned for these uh, descriptors. But more than half of them were actually assigned to a single biodiversity-related so this rose the question that there is actually a redundancy of indicators where they are overlapping. Multimetric indices, of course, can have several of those. The gap analysis uh, highlighted that we are missing, or there are only few indicators for microbes, pelagic invertebrates, cephalopod, uh, and reptiles. So those were the lowest ones. Also, not so many indicators yet for the genetic structure of the populations and some of the habitats like deep sea and sea ice habitat as kind of specific one uh, where we didn't have many indicators available. Uh, food web structure and processes, so species at the top of the food webs, productivity of the species and also there were gaps with related to impact indicators like impacts of non indigenous species and ethnic uh, concerning the physical characteristics. And also the, many of the indicators had actually insufficient information of the quality and confidence or nor did they have targets or <coughs> values. And also not, not much information of pressure responsiveness. Many were considered operational, but the, really the applicability to MSFP was not so obvious in, in the information that was available at the time of compiling this. So devotes, uh, the development focus to, to uh, methodology to assess the indicator quality and confidence, and then methods for setting targets for various types of indicators and also to tools to assess the indicator responses. So challenges. Do we really, as we already discussed, can we link the understanding of the, of the functional aspects to marine biodiversity? For instance, the, the, how the food webs are recovering for the perturbations. And indicators to assess the changes in the structure, but also in the function of the food webs. So after this uh, over overview, what we have been working with, we will go into the uh, into these uh, uh, presentations where we have more details of the outcomes of the devotes and also other other works. And uh, really, thanks are are due to the devotes participants and also the work, other work package, package leaders, Thorsten and Laura, that have been contributing to this work. Thank you.